This was a difficult video to research as the topics and details involved are truly disturbing. What made matters even worse throughout the research process was the manner in which some media personalities regarded the issue. The apparent grotesque killings of thousands of cattle and other animals alike is nothing that should be taken lightly or in ridicule. For the farmers and families involved in such horrific events, these matters are not of the laughing sort. Now, with that in mind, let's set our biases and preconceived notions behind and delve into the phenomenon surrounding cattle mutilation with an open and sober mind. Cattle mutilations are perhaps one of the most unsettling memes of American folklore and mythology that secede the Industrial Revolution. The link between cattle mutilation and UFO folklore has been suggested on multiple occasions, yet the connection has very rarely been taken seriously by those who report on such matter. For most inquirers of the phenomenon, there are two solutions that come to the foreground. The first, and most widely accepted, is that mutilated cattle carcasses are merely the result of naturally occurring deaths and decomposition. The second hypothesis suggests that cattle mutilation is the result of extraterrestrial experimentation. In the messy footsteps of these two domineering hypotheses exists a few less popular culprits, such as satanic cults and secret government research operations. Many skeptics have pointed out the unlikely reality that advanced alien beings would travel massive distances to Earth only to dabble with our cattle. But I find this to be somewhat of a callous claim, one that primarily finds its strength in its comedic element and lack of knowledge of the subject matter. After all, we humans do travel great distances to conduct very strange procedures on plenty of unaware and confused animals. To rationalize based on what may seem silly should no longer be considered a valid basis for an argument. The true nature of the cattle mutilation phenomenon is far too complex to be deduced to such explanations. In this video, I'll attempt to produce a more encompassing database of reports and experiences within the phenomenon itself. Cattle mutilation cases are unique to the paranormal field in that they leave physical traces and are often linked to strange sightings and occurrences. Most paranormal phenomena leave little to no physical traces of their existence behind. However, with cattle mutilation, there seems to be ample evidence and physical data left in the tracks of strange and anomalous events. A good starting point in the discussion of this phenomenon is the case of Lady the Horse, nicknamed Snippy. On September 27th, 1967, Harry King discovered the mutilated corpse of a horse named Lady on his farm in the San Luis Valley of Colorado. Lady belonged to a woman of the family named Nellie Lewis. Lady was found with the tissue on her face removed in what appeared to be a precise operation. Upon arrival on the scene, King noted a smell similar to acetone that lingered around the corpse. There was no sign of bloating, decomposition, or predation. What made things even stranger was that Lady's footsteps ended about 100 feet from where her carcass lay. No other footprints were found at the scene when authorities arrived to investigate. 
but they did uncover 15 burns across the property which appeared to be circular exhaust marks and a 3 foot bush that had been flattened to 10 inches from the ground within a 10 foot radius. Nellie later found several blobs of greenish gelatin in some bushes near the scene. After touching the gelatin, her hands began to burn. In addition to the globs, Nellie found a piece of metal that was covered in hair that appeared to be from Lady. Police Sheriff of San Luis Valley, Ben Phillips, declared that Lady was perhaps struck by lightning, despite there having been no recent storms in the area. U.S. Forest employee Dwayne Martin found several burn marks on Lady's body and concluded that the marks themselves were radioactive. But here is where the story takes a bizarre turn. Several residents of the area witnessed unidentified objects in the sky the night of Lady's death two of whom were police officers. The two officers later claimed that they had been threatened with losing their jobs if they were to speak about the incident. A few days after the discovery of Lady's body, a pathologist was found trespassing on the farm by police. The pathologist was named Dr. John Altschuler, and he claimed that he was watching for UFOs. The police allegedly took him to the body of Lady upon his request, where he concluded that the lungs, heart, and thyroid were removed with some of the cleanest cuts he had seen. Lady's brain and abdominal organs were found to be missing as well, with no fluid being present in her spinal column and no blood throughout her body. Two weeks after the story had been publicized, Two students from Alamosa State College confessed to shooting the horse during the night of the killing. However, no evidence ever came forward to validate the student's claim, and the fact that there were no footprints found at the scene added to the mystery. The case was never solved, and Lady's story soon became embedded within UFO folklore and American culture. The case of Snippy the Horse became one of the most well-known unsolved animal mutilations in history, but it was far from the end. From 1970 to 1975, a wave of livestock mutilations had occurred across the country. In autumn of 1973, in a span of about six weeks, Kansas alone had experienced over 44 cattle mutilations. The cattle mutilation phenomenon had become such a devastating issue that on April 20th, 1979, former Apollo 17 astronaut Harrison Schmidt called for a multi-state conference to launch an investigation into the phenomenon. Schmidt was the senator of New Mexico at the time of the conference and believed that something far more sinister had been at play. There are few activities more dangerous than an unsolved pattern of crime. Such a pattern is the mutilation killings of thousands of cattle, horses, and other animals over the past several years throughout many states. The economic losses suffered by individuals probably have reached $2.5 million or more. The conference held saw people from all walks of life coming together in an attempt to solve the mystery. The phenomenon was no longer exclusive to farmers and local law enforcement, but had extended to the higher echelons of government, including the FBI. The conference was met with dozens of people from all walks of life who had been affected either indirectly or directly by the phenomenon. Astronauts, scientists from Los Alamos laboratories, governors, tribal police, FBI agents, and many more attended the conference. Following the conference, Operation Animal Mutilation began in May of 1979, funded by a $44,170 grant from the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration and headed by FBI agent Kenneth Rommel. The goal of the operation was to determine the causes of as many cattle mutilations as possible and to decide whether or not there was a threat to national security. Rommel eventually came out with several reports of animal mutilations, all of which 
he classified as natural deaths and predation. On a few occasions, he allegedly refused to look at evidence brought to him because he did not want to entertain any hypothesis that was outside the realm of conventional thought. Farmers and victims of the mutilations became outraged with Rommel's report and were persistent in the prospect that they were capable of distinguishing a natural death from a mutilation. Among the displeased was Harrison Schmidt, who later commented, Apparently, Rommel had reached his conclusions before he began his investigations. Despite Rommel's unpopular report, he did conclude a few of the cases to be of unnatural or manipulated circumstances. Operation Animal Mutilation eventually lost traction, and most of the cases were handed over to local authorities once again. In New Mexico, law enforcement concluded that some mutilated animals had been tranquilized with PCP and subjected to anticoagulants prior to their deaths. They proposed that surgical techniques were performed on the animals and that these techniques were becoming more and more elaborate over time. Things became a lot stranger when witnesses began to report seeing unidentified military helicopters near areas where cattle mutilations had recently occurred. In Logan County of Colorado, 72 animal mutilations were reported from 1975 to 1977. Logan County Sheriff Tex Graves reported finding what appeared to be tripod marks on the ground near some of the mutilations. Apparently, Officer Graves, along with another deputy, had seen several unidentified flying objects near cattle mutilations on various occasions. The officers became so familiar with the objects that they started to call the largest object Big Mama. Graves claimed to have seen several smaller objects exit Big Mama and return to her later. The deputies managed to capture several photos of the objects. These are the photos provided by the deputies. Among many of the hypotheses regarding cattle mutilations is the idea that cattle mutilations are the result of sacrificial rituals propagated by satanic cults. For this, the evidence is not strong, but as I will discuss later, its historical implications do add credence to the cult theory. A report from a lab at Oklahoma State University found high levels of mescaline in the pericardial flues of a mutilated cow from Arkansas. Mescaline is a psychedelic substance found in a type of cactus called peyote. Several investigators have suggested that there is a potential link between cultists and the use of psychedelics. Personally, I'm not too convinced with this connection, and it's very possible that the cattle simply ingested peyote prior to their death. The idea that satanic cults are responsible for cattle mutilation is one that arrived on the scene not long after mutilations first began making headlines. It's a more grounded hypothesis than extraterrestrial intervention, but it fails to provide evidence of motives and incentives that would be involved in such a ritual. However, perhaps the curtains of this phenomenon are simply too thick. We truly don't have enough information on something that would potentially be highly secretive. Wild cattle, or aurochs, were domesticated on a few different occasions throughout human history. Cattle were some of the earliest animals to be domesticated by humans, likely occurring in the Indus Valley around 10,500 years ago. Cattle were domesticated for nutritional purposes, production of clothing, and for sacrificial rituals. Raising cattle has been an integral part of human societies for millennia. The ancient Romans would herd cattle through a procession to eventually be slaughtered as a part of a ceremonial ritual. Sacrifices of these kinds were primarily conducted by a priest. Mithraism was an ancient Roman religion centered on the god of Mithras. It was inspired by Iranian worship of Zoroastrianism. Mithras worship in the Roman Empire was characterized by images of the god of Mithras slaughtering a bull. 
In ancient Roman texts of Mithras' worship, there are accounts of gods that would steal cattle. The thief, who draws a herd away by single-handed force, is a common figure in mythology, and it is logical that, if the bull is the breeding ground of generated souls, the function of the cattle-stealing god will be to reverse the effect of birth. This quote offers some strange imagery that eerily parallels reports from farmers in the 1970s describing strange entities and objects that would abduct and mutilate their cattle in the night. The ritualistic history of cattle sacrifice and mutilation for religious purposes brings a serious question to the foreground of this phenomenon. Is there a connection between historical importance and symbolism of cattle with the contemporary phenomenon of abduction and mutilation. Let's jump back to the 20th and 21st centuries and take a closer look at cattle mutilation cases through our newfound historical lens. In Oregon, on July 23rd of 2020, a rancher discovered one of his cows mutilated near the edge of his farm. Police investigated the scene and discovered that the cow had its tongue, genitals, and reproductive organs removed. They concluded that the organs were removed via some kind of surgical procedure and that the cuts were clean. The cow was found in a strange upright sitting position, one that would not have been natural for the animal. This case exemplifies how the mystery of cattle mutilation is still ongoing and that we have barely scratched the surface since its rise to popularity in the mid-1970s. Before we delve into some hypotheses, here are a few notable cases from the last 50 years. 1975, Sheriff George Yarnell from Elbert County, Colorado claimed he was not convinced with lab reports of cattle mutilations declared as predator damage. He sent in a piece of cow meat that he cut up with a knife. It came back from the lab as predator damage. Sheriff Leroy Yowell of Lincoln County, Colorado, in 1975, claimed to have chased military helicopters by plane. He later found a government briefcase with a bloody scalpel and parts of a cow's ear and tongue. October 1990, Vancouver. Richard Fazio found five cattle on his farm, dead and carefully mutilated. Organs and body parts were removed and scattered across the pasture. Oregon State University analysis suggested that the wounds were produced by electrosurgical excision. Gabe Valdez, former New Mexico State Police officer in the 1970s, was involved in cattle mutilation investigations. Dulce, New Mexico, saw dozens of cattle mutilations during the 1970s where organs, blood, and other tissues were removed from the bodies. Valdez became convinced after years of intense investigation that a clandestine government agency was to blame for the mutilations and that an underground military base in Dulce was for cattle experimentation. Many believe that the Dulce area is home to a secret underground base where the military and extraterrestrial beings conduct joint experiments on livestock and even humans. Author of Stalking the Herd, Christopher O'Brien, believes that cattle mutilation is the result of secret environmental operations that possess technology far beyond our understanding. After all, you can learn a great deal about humans from studying cattle when attempting to keep operations covert and secret. Dissecting cattle could potentially be a very clever way to spy on human populations. Not only is cattle hemoglobin almost identical to that of humans, but disease transferal from cows to people is something that occurs with relative frequency. From an archaeological perspective, when attempting to learn about ancient societies and cultures, it is integral to the archaeological process to examine the remains of livestock used by the societies under scrutiny. It's an interesting hypothesis, one that would be far more unexpected. Another hypothesis, which may seem like a bit of a stretch, is that perhaps the cattle mutilation phenomenon is a form of blackmail. Perhaps there are extremely covert military operations that are ongoing across various bases in the country, and to keep personnel from whistleblowing, 
as a rite of passage. High clearance individuals must perform some kind of heinous act on an animal on video to be kept as blackmail in case they ever decide to come forward with information. It would be a clever way to keep covert operations from spilling out into the public eye, but it's mere speculation at this point. What I can say with confidence is that something seriously strange occurred between 1970 and 1975 across North American farms. The evidence brought forth by countless officials, FBI agents, and scientists suggests that there indeed existed, and perhaps still exists, a peculiar relationship between clandestine groups and American livestock. This phenomenon should be taken much more seriously. If there's anything that has come to my attention throughout the researching of this article. It's how detrimental disinformation and patronization can be to the truth. The phenomenon of cattle mutilation is one which should be thoroughly researched and claims from these events should be taken with a grain of salt. The mystery still lingers across American farms, but hopefully one day the victims of these heinous crimes will find the answers they so desperately deserve. Thanks for watching, and until next time.